All right, so let's continue some example problems that we can work out together. First one I want to do is just a simple temperature problem. So in this class, we're going to be dealing mainly with SI units. So let's go ahead and do a conversion problem where we just convert a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. And notice I don't put a degree sign on the Kelvin because it's an absolute scale. So Kelvin doesn't have a degree sign. It's just Kelvin. So to do this, we need to add 273 Kelvin, or 273 to the degree Celsius, in order to get a reading, equivalent reading in Kelvin. So 37 degrees Celsius is the equivalent of 310 Kelvin. So that problem was simple enough and in this class we'll be using these conversions quite a bit. So keep this number in mind, this 273. This conversion either addition to Celsius or subtraction from Kelvin in order to convert from one to the other. All right. Next one I want to work again is another pressure problem. So a lot of times you'll go to the doctor or you'll go to the dentist and at the doctor and the dentist they'll tell you your blood pressure is 120 over 80. And that's a typical healthy blood pressure, normal blood pressure. Now, first of all, what does it mean? 120 over 80 is talking about units of pressure. What are the units of this pressure? So this is 120 millimeters of mercury. This is 80 millimeters of mercury. But then you may say to yourself, uh, but that's still, that's not a unit of pressure. Well, it is a unit of pressure. Even though it's talking about millimeters of mercury, it's relating it back to the manometer problem that we talked about last time. So you'll remember that the manometer problem, we multiply the density of the fluid times the gravity times the column height. And in this case, this is telling us what fluid it is. So it's telling us we have 120 millimeters, that would be H, of mercury and that would give us the density and G in this case would be the gravitational constant. So we could convert this value now to a pressure value very easily. So when you hear somebody tell you um, that the pressure is um, five inches of water that may also be something that you hear in practice. You know that they're referring to the column height of water which is equivalent to a given pressure. And this is very common in meteorology. You'll hear barometric pressure is given in this type of form, millimeters of mercury, inches of water. Uh, on manometers, it's very typical to find that also. So it's just something that's important for you to know as we may be using it in the class. So let's go ahead and convert. So our job here is going to be, let's convert millimeters of mercury to Pascal or we can say kilopascal. All right. So to do that, we're going to use this formula, rho gh. Now, I'm going to take the density of mercury to be 13,600 kilograms per meter cubed. All right. We'll multiply this times the gravitational constant, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And this is times the column height, which in this case is 120 millimeters. So I'll go ahead and do 120 divided by 1,000 to convert this to meters. So let's check out the units here on this. So the units are going to be kilogram meter per second squared. So we have kilogram 
meter per second squared, we know that that is a Newton. Alright, so these are taken care of. And we have a meter. One of these meters can cancel out with one of these meters. So this becomes a 2. So we have Newton per meter squared. We know that Newton per meter squared from our last previous few lectures is equivalent of a Pascal. So a force per unit area is a Pascal. So let's go ahead and multiply these out. So we have 13,600 times 9.81 times 0.12. That's going to be 16,009 pascals. Or we could say it's 16 kilopascals. So when somebody tells you your blood pressure is 120 millimeters of mercury, you know that 16 kilopascals is, is the equivalent. Let's do the other one. Let's convert 80 millimeters of mercury now to pascals. So 80 millimeters of mercury. So we'll take the density of mercury times the gravitational constant, 9.81, times the column height, which is 80, and we'll convert this to meters, from 80 millimeters to meters. So if we multiply these out, we would get 10,673 pascals, or an equivalent of about 10.7 kilopascals. So now a new challenge for you here. Let's convert the millimeters of mercury value that we have here to the equivalent height in water that we need. All right, so over here, let me do kind of a side one here. So let, let's convert one hundred and twenty millimeters of mercury to meters of water. So what pressure or how much column of water would we need that would have to exert the same amount of pressure that we have for hundred and twenty millimeters of mercury. So let's find out. All right, so we have a value here. So 120 millimeters of mercury, we already determined is 16,009 pascals. And we know the density of water, so we say density of water, gravity, and we also know what we're trying to solve is for the height of that water column. So our density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Gravitational constant is 9.81. And we can solve for the height of the water column. So for 100 and 120 millimeters of mercury is equivalent to a 1.63 meter height of water. I would like you to practice the next one on your own. So um, calculate the height of water that's equivalent to 80 millimeters of mercury and I'll give you the answer here. And this is, keep in mind, this is for, or I should say equivalent. to. 80 millimeters of mercury and this height is 1.09 meters. So here are our answers here and our answer to the other one. 
corner right here. All right. So let's do one more problem together. And then we will continue our conversation about thermodynamics. So in this one, somebody is submerged underwater. So this is kind of morbid, uh, but um, maybe it's just somebody swimming. So maybe not. Let me not think. It's think of the worst case scenario here. So maybe somebody is swimming. It's the summertime right now while I'm recording this, so it's possible. What this question is asking, or what I'd like to know for this question, is what is the pressure at this person's, if they're f swimming in water, what is the pressure at this per person's head? And what is the pressure acting at this on this person's toes? So is there any temperature? or pressure difference, or what's the pressure difference between their head and their toes. And here we're making a few assumptions. This is water. Out here, this is atmospheric pressure. And let's, so let's calculate this. So our, our conversion from one to the other is going to be including atmospheric pressure. Okay, so when we calculate, for example, the pressure at the head of this person underwater, okay, that's going to have the pressure of the atmosphere that's acting on the surface of the water, and we're going to add the depth of the water to this, rho g h head. Likewise, when we calculate the pressure acting on these per this person's toes, we're going to have atmospheric pressure. And we're going to add that depth of water that they, ha that they have all the way down to their toes. All right. So if we want to find the pressure difference, Let's say we want to find the pressure difference between their head and their toes. So let's say toes minus P head. All right. The pressure at the toes we determine is, this is toes, P atmosphere plus rho G H toes. This is minus P atmosphere plus rho G H head. Well, we can see here from this equation that the atmospheric pressures cancel. And we have rho G H toes minus rho G H head. Now, if we assume that the densities is constant between this person's head and toes, which it's going to be, and we have the gravitational constant, which is just constant, or we assume it's constant for this class, we would take the depth difference between this person's toes and their head. So let's uh, we're assuming this is water, so we'll say this is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. This is times nine point eight one meters per second squared. And this is all multiplied by the height difference. Let's say the person's toes are three meters below water and their head is one meter below water. So that's two. So we have nine eight one zero times two. That is nineteen six twenty pascals. That's the pressure difference from this particular person's head 
to their toes. So just a few examples, some temperature and pressure, a few more to practice from chapter two. We'll continue our lectures on thermodynamics um, here in the next following videos. Then we will um, work out some more problems for those.